Unless you've been living under a rock, you will have noticed that in the past year, a certain camera has really taken over the photography community. And this entire time, I couldn't really get my head around why there is so much hype around the camera that seemingly can't do that much. So I was thinking, this camera is surely overhyped. There's no way that a fixed lens APS-C camera, the one where you can't change its lens, should be getting as much attention and hype as the Fujifilm X100V has in the past couple of years. Unlike most modern day APS-C cameras like the Sonys, the Canons, or even the Nikons of the world, you can't actually change the lens that comes with the Fuji X100V. So you're kind of stuck with the 23 mm focal range. If you've watched my recent Tamron lens review video, you'll know that I'm very practical when it comes to decision making around the kind of camera gear that I'm purchasing. It's usually a simple combination of how much can this thing do for me and how much does it cost? And you know, being the ignorant fool who oversimplifies his decisions that I am, it simply makes no sense to me to buy the X100V. Why would I pay like a grand and a half, which is what it's currently going on on eBay because it's sold out everywhere else. Why would I pay that much money for a camera that can do less things than cheaper alternative cameras? Now, I don't want to knock this camera too much because a lot of people are using it. There's clearly something to it and I haven't actually tried this camera yet. So that's what today's video is going to be about. So I got in touch with my friend Mike Chudley, who in recent times has really embraced the Fuji X100V. You know, most of the photos on his profile in recent months have been using that camera, and you know, he's been repeatedly telling me how much he loves it. I've been closely following Mike's account because I'm a big fan of his work, and him being a much more experienced photographer than I am, you know, I'll trust his judgement on this one. Maybe he knows something that I don't. Mike has kindly agreed to lend me his camera for the day, the X100V, because he actually has a newer and shinier camera to play around with. So. I'm going to be walking around with the X100V today and see if there might be anything that I've missed when you know, judging this camera initially and to see if there truly is a more fun or some kind of elevated photography experience when using this very hype camera. Make sure to stick around till the end to hear my final verdict on this camera and whether or not it's worth buying. Right, today we've got the Fuji X100V, the much hyped, possibly most hyped camera of the past year has actually reached the extent of being out of stock in loads of places so it's actually quite difficult to get your hand on this which is why i'm very grateful for my friend mike for lending me this camera for the day to let me test it out and see what all the hype is about so today we'll just be walking around london during the day i've got the x100v with its fixed lens uh, which is 23 mil and just see what kind of shots we can get with it. I think the style of photo that you tend to get with the X100V is vastly different to the type of picture that I usually take. So I'm very interested to see yeah, how I do with this style of street photography and uh, whether or not this camera is um, good for me, I suppose. <laughs> not used like a non-sony camera in so long it's really difficult for me to like even know which buttons to press the whole thing feels very very different to what i'm used to see that match see this woman this woman's hood this girl's hood <laughs> ah. yeah. mike pointed out an interesting observation how the a person's head, the little mirror street side thing and the shadow formed like a nice little trifecta of shapes which is interesting. So today I'm really taking photos that are a different style to what I'm usually used to and for the lack of better words I'm just gonna call it like the Fujifilm style of street photography you know it's less about having that 85 mil like super blurry background hype street photography it's more about you know paying attention to the details and noticing things that you usually walk past let's get a picture of nicholas lane i like the diagonal shadow here this is one guy i think his name is fuji hunter on Instagram, whose whole thing is like, he takes photos of corners of buildings. And I don't know what it is. Like, it's, it's a very basic and like simple idea, obviously. But if executed well, it does look really cool. I'll put this profile up on screen. And I think I really love his work and I love that kind of style of photography. And obviously, 
someone who does a great job. And this kind of stuff is Mike Chudley, whose camera I'm using today. So if you haven't already, I highly recommend checking out his profile. Oh, this is nice. I like that. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> you got one. Look at that. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. That's great. One thing that I am quite curious about is the whole Fujifilm recipe thing and the fact that everyone raves about the Fujifilm colors. It looks like a lot of people basically tweak their camera settings in a way so that the camera essentially produces readily edited photos straight out of the camera. This obviously saves a lot of time because you don't have to edit anything in Lightroom. I'll be using Mike Chudley's custom Fujifilm recipe in today's video, so if you're a Fuji enthusiast and you want to copy this look, I would highly recommend checking out Mike's channel. Oh, I missed that shadow. There's a bit of a delay, I swear, when I press the shutter button. So I keep missing. Or maybe I'm just the bad photographer. There we go. I got a shadow. I love the clouds in the background there. And again, this is such a nice area for street photography, bank. There's just like so many interesting buildings, especially on a sunny day, you can get a lot of really nice shots here. Yeah, this is a really nice spot. I just got a picture, but I wasn't recording. Perfect. I got him pointing, look. Oh wait, do Fuji, film, Fuji shooters not do vertical? Yeah, well that was a wide scene, wasn't it? So I would have... Oh, uh, true. Because I wanted the cathedral in it, that's why. Like this, that, that little thing. Yeah, sure, i Do you post horizontal pictures now? On Instagram? Yeah. Yeah, I think I only... Uh, well, it depends on the scene, but... I think it's because I watched all of those videos at the start. In my head, like, all of those rules are just burned and like, it has to be 4x5 because then you're maximizing the sc screen oh, real estate yeah, yeah. and like, all that bullshit, which... In the end, it's probably not actually okay. that important. I'm not gonna lie, this style of street photography is hard, man. You have to pay so much attention to your surroundings and 
like far more, you already have to pay attention to the surroundings, obviously, with that kind of photography that I usually do, but this is a different level. Driving in Trafalgar Square right now, the light is beautiful and there's lots of people. So let's see if we can snap some interesting subjects over here. <laughs> That was insanely sweet. There's an elderly couple who both um, both on scooters because they uh, obviously can't walk that well, but they're still out here taking photos in Trafalgar Square. Got to respect the hustle. Uh, no, these are lovely. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good one. Great moment, that is. <laughs> well done. Great captain. So you two just out and about taking yeah, photos just today. Around, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. It's a good day for it. It's a good day. Yeah. We're lucky with the sun. Yeah, lots of paper, man. Okay, before I say anything, let me just add a huge caveat that I only got one day with this camera. So this is not going to be a long-term deep dive review kind of video. It's more of a first impressions video and my general thoughts on the X100V. After using it for a day, I can definitely see why people enjoy using this camera. So it's two things that I really enjoyed. The first one being, it's very lightweight and I didn't have to walk around with a lot of gear. While it is quite restrictive, to not be able to change your lenses, I guess the luxury is that you don't have to bring any lenses with you. So you're not breaking your back if you're walking around London for an entire day shooting. The second thing I really enjoyed was the whole Fuji recipe thing. So I used Mike Chudley's recipe for, uh, for these images, which meant that I was able to just take the JPEG straight out of the SD card from the camera and just put them in this video. There's no Lightroom editing or anything involved, which obviously makes my life as a photographer a lot easier and a lot simpler. In terms of the overall feel and look of this camera, I am a big fan. I think the X100V is a very aesthetic camera and it feels very nice to use. Like the way they created all of the buttons and the aperture ring and stuff like that, it's a very tactile experience, which in a way made me feel a little bit more connected to the camera itself. I'm not sure if that makes any sense. I do really love the Fujifilm recipe thing. I really wish that Sony and Canon had more of an equivalent. Like I know that you can tweak the in-camera settings for Sony and Canon, but when we're comparing the actual communities that surround these camera brands, there's no arguing that the Fujifilm community is super strong and they're very active in the sense that they're constantly coming up with new recipes or recipes that emulate certain famous film stocks like you know Kodak Gold or whatever. And they're you know actively sharing it in all of these forums. And I haven't really seen that to the same extent for other camera brands, which is a bit of a shame. And like I said earlier, in terms of workflow, it just makes any photographer's life just a lot easier being able to use JPEG straight out of the camera which meant that for me, for this video, for example, the 50 or so photos that I put into this POV, there was basically a non-existent editing process, which was super nice. I feel like in a weird way, the limitations of the X100V also play into its strengths. So what I mean by that is, if you don't need to think about what lens you're going to shoot with, because you can't change the lens, and you're not going to think about, you know, the colors or the kind of edit that you're going to put on the photo, because you already have the film recipe, it frees up a lot of your creative capacity to actually think about the shot that you're getting in the moment that you are capturing. And I think this might be the reason behind this one thing that I always hear X100V users say is, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I kind of fell out of with photography for a while, but then I got this camera and it really made photography fun again and it made me fall in love with photography again. And my theory is that by removing all of this noise and these extra decisions that you have to go through, by not having that, you're much more able to focus on the art and the beauty of street photography itself. 
But if I'm being completely honest, I still wouldn't say that this camera is for me. Just because of the types of things that I like to use my camera for, I don't think it's a very suitable purchase for me. It just wouldn't make sense for me to buy this because I think I would feel very restricted if I owned an X100V. I understand that a lot of photographers will have their primary commercial camera with which they earn the money, which could be like a mirrorless Sony or a Canon camera, and then they have this like fun camera on the side, which is in this case the X100V. Like sure, it looks really cool and it's a very aesthetic camera and it feels nice to use. The workflow thing that I explained earlier is also a nice to have feature. However, at the end of the day, you're still paying a grand and a half for a camera that does not have that much functionality. In terms of low light performance, you know, frame rate and burst mode, video capabilities or stabilization, the X100V doesn't fare that well compared to other cheaper alternatives. And because of these reasons, I couldn't personally rationalize this purchase for myself. I just couldn't really justify buying the X100V for that much money. Especially if I think about the kind of gear that I could buy for the same amount of money for my Sony setup, it just wouldn't really make sense. Now, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's some really vital detail that I've overlooked. If you're a Fuji stand and you're literally fuming in your seat right now, please do let me know in the comments because I am genuinely curious why there is so much hype about this camera. Okay, in summary, using the X100V was very fun and I'd like to thank Mike again for lending me his camera for the day. I really enjoyed the simplicity of it and I did think that the Fujifilm colors were really nice and the whole film simulation thing and being able to tweak the settings is amazing. However, I won't purchase this camera for myself anytime soon or for the foreseeable future just because of its limited functionality and while there are things that it adds, I don't think it's necessarily worth the money. So, I hope you enjoyed this video as always. I hope I didn't offend anyone by trashing anyone's favorite camera. Uh, if so, feel free to discuss in the comments below. I'll try and be as active as I can. And uh, yeah, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you next week.